So now I just want to go through a quick example of how we would do the RL transit analysis by hand. And in this particular scenario, what we're looking at is we're looking at a situation where I would have a substation. And so in this case, what we're modeling is we're modeling the equivalent impedance as seen on the uh, medium voltage side. And so this could be just the transformer impedance or some combination of the transformer impedance and the transmission impedance. And what I'm doing is I'm just going um, ahead and assuming there is a breaker here and then that the fault's going to be occurring on the load side of the breaker at time equal to zero. And as I mentioned before, we've got 34.5 kV substation, so 60 hertz, and the equivalent impedance as seen by this fault is going to be 1 plus J3 ohms. And so what we would need to do is we need to convert this over to its kind of equivalent RL circuit. And if I've got 34.5 kV, that is a line-to-line -line value. And so what you would need to do, since this is a line-to-neutral type of a circuit, is you divide that by square root of 3, that gives you a line-to-neutral value, and you, since this is an RMS value, you need to multiply this by square root of 2 to get that to a 0 to peak. So a lot of times when you're working these problems, in real life, you have a line RMS value. You have to multiply by square root of 2 to get the 0 to peak. You have to divide by square root of 3 to get a per phase value. In this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm using a cosine form. I know in the notes I use the sine form, but just wanted to change things up so you can see what the difference would be. But again, what I have in here, if the switching occurs at time equal zero, that I have an angle of theta in here, which could be changed to represent the point on the wave. So in this case, if you had uh, theta equals zero, for time equals zero, this would be a fault corresponding to when the voltage source is at its peak value. And then in the diagram, you can go ahead and you can put in the resistance, which is 1 ohm. Now the reactance was 3 ohms, but that's not an inductance. And so what we need to do, and it got chopped off here a little bit, but uh, take the 3 ohms, and we know that um, we know that x is going to be omega times L. And if x is omega times L, then L is going to be x divided by omega, where omega is 2 pi times 60. All right, so you're going to see this number a lot, 377. That's 2 pi times 60. We take the 3 ohms, we divide through by 377, and this is going to give us an inductance of 0 0.007966 henrys. Um, as far as a term that we're going to use, we're going to see later on, since the DK um, on the decaying exponential term has a value of minus R over L in it, uh, I, right here I can go ahead and calculate what R over L is. And in this case, it's going to be 125.6. So the way you start this out is you would go ahead and you would calculate the steady state current. So I'm going to go do this with the phasor calculation. I'm going to take the phasor voltage. I'm going to divide through by the magnitude and angle of that impedance. Um, and so that magnitude, again, is the square root of r squared plus omega l squared at an angle of the arc tangent of omega l divided by r. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 34.5 I'm going to divide through by square root of 3. I'm going to multiply by square root of 2. And um, this is going to give me 28,169. Now, <clears throat> this isn't technically a, an RMS phasor value. I know I'm going to convert that back later on. So I'm, what I'm actually calculating in this case is a 0 to peak value. It's, it's not the RMS value, but the 0 to the peak value I'm going to use later on. And so the... The angle on the numerator is going to correspond with the point of wave angle of theta. I've got the angle of the arc tangent of omega L over R in the denominator. And what this is going to give me for the um, steady state current 
is a zero to peak value of 8914 and angle theta minus 71.6 degrees. All right, so in those waveforms I showed you before, this is what we would have in steady state. This is what we would have for the peak value on that waveform once that decaying DC transit has disappeared. So when I convert this back into steady state, um, as far as the time domain, it's 8914 cosine with the argument of 377t plus theta minus 71.6 degrees. We haven't said what the point of wave is on yet, and so we're kind of leave this as a general purpose result where we can plug in theta later on, but we have kind of hard coded it for given omega L to R ratio. So next thing we need to do is we need to find the transit portion of this current. And so what we have to do is we solve for the circuit with no forcing function, L di dt plus R i is equal to zero. Uh, if I substitute in wherever I see a di dt for s, I can, I can write a characteristic equation using that. Um, s plus R over L is my characteristic equation. I'm solving for that root when this is equal to zero, and this is s is equal to minus R over L. So the transit portion of this is again what we saw in the theory part of the lecture, AE to the ST, S is minus R over L, and then we have this term A that we need to compute. All right, so the transit part to AE to the minus 125.6 times T, and then I just simply append these two solutions, the steady state part and the transit part, to give me the total solution, and this is defined for time time greater than or equal to zero. So what we do next is we apply the boundary condition. There's no load in this circuit, so that boundary condition is going to be uh, zero current before the fault occurs, right after the fault occurs. Current going through the inductor cannot change instantaneously. So IT is equal to zero at, at time equal to zero. Should probably have written, put the zero in there instead, but, but basically that's going to be the boundary condition. And then what I can do is I can apply this to this um, total solution at time equal to zero. So I0 is equal to zero, plug in for T equal to zero, and I've got 8914 cosine with the argument theta minus 71.6 degrees plus A evaluated at that exponential when time is equal to zero. And that whole exponential term is just equal to one. And then this gives me the expression for A, all right? So basically A is kind of the complement of the uh, coefficient. It's minus what's, whatever the coefficient is going to be on the uh, steady state part of it. So then when I put everything together, what I can do to simplify things is I've actually got a common term, 8914 um, times cosine 377t plus theta minus 71.6 degrees minus cosine with an argument of theta minus 71.6 degrees times e to the minus 125.6t and that got cut off there at the at the side there in the scan. So anyway this is uh, I guess pretty close to the final answer although I haven't specified what what theta would be yet. So anyway, how do I go about working in what theta is going to be? Well, I've got another condition that says I want to figure out what this fault current is if the fault occurs when I have a scenario where the source voltage is 10 kV with voltage increasing. Okay, this is a zero peak value when this voltage is actually increasing. And so what I would need to do is at time equals zero, I take that source voltage, I set that equal to 10,000, and again we had a peak value of 28,169, and at time equals zero, I would have cosine of theta. And what I need to do is I need to solve for theta then. When you solve for theta, theta actually has two solutions, plus or minus of that angle. And so what we have to make sure of and you can play around with drawing this out, we have to make sure that we choose that angle such that 
not only does the magnitude match up, but we're, we know we're on the increasing part of the waveform instead of on the decreasing part of the waveform like shown over here. And that's going to occur when theta is equal to minus 69.2. And a lot of times it helps to just kind of sketch that out to make sure you're choosing the right value. And so when you have the current, when you want to calculate the total current then, now that you have this angle of theta that corresponds to the point on wave, you can substitute that in. And then you're going to get this total expression right here for, for time greater than zero. This is the total solution um, that I'm going to have for this particular problem. And um, you could either have it where you have both the terms with the common coefficient 8914, or you can take the 8914 and multiply by this cosine of minus 140.8 and break it down if you want to. Um, but, but anyway, this is what you're going to have for the, the total solution for time greater than or equal to zero. Now, I might ask you, well, what's the ratio of the asymmetrical to symmetrical current? In other words, what's the peak instantaneous value divided by the value that we have in steady state? In this particular case, it turns out to one, be 1.34, but how do you get that particular value? So one way you could do something like that would be you can just plot it out. You could plug this expression into MATLAB and plot it out and you can kind of get the value that way. Uh, another way would be to look at this and think about, well, this peak value for the exponential term, um, it's 6980 e to the minus 125.6, so this is going to be a positive term. When is this instantaneous value right here going to be at its maximum? Well, it's going to be at its maximum when this particular expression right here is going to evaluate to uh, such a value where the cosine of this argument is going to be equal to 1. All right? So when 377t minus 140.8, uh, when, you, when you take the cosine of that, when that gives me 1, then basically this 89 114 is going to add to this exponential term to give you the, the highest peak value. And then what you could do is if you could figure out this time when this cosine term is 1, then you can plug that time into here and then you could use this to get the, the peak value as, a, as an estimate. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be pretty close to that. Um, so that would be one way of doing this. The more exact way of doing this would be if you're going to apply calculus, you know that if you want to get a peak or a minimum value, if you have the, the form of the function, if you're going to take the derivative with respect to time, set that equal to zero, what you can do is you can then solve for time, and that's going to give you a maximum or a minimum um, result. And so in this case, if you do this DIDT, you get this term on the right, which is a very complicated term to solve for because um, it's a function of time where time's in the argument of the sine, uh, time's in the argument for the exponential term. Uh, this type of equation is what we sometimes refer to as a transcendental equation. There's no good solution doing it by hand. You have to use numerical techniques for that. So you could use numerical techniques to find the time that satisfies this equality. But usually what you would do if you just want to kind of get close to that is you look at what is this 377t minus 140.8. Uh, what's this need to be to make cosine of that equal to 1? And this is just going to have to be 0. You solve for time. Uh, time would be 0 0.00652 seconds. You can plug that back in, and what you're going to get, you're going to get an approximation for what this peak value is at, at 12 kiloamperes. And so there's like a number of different ways you could do this. You're not going to have to do something like this a lot in this class, um, but you can, you can plot it out and you can get it from the plot. You can you know, solve this exact transcendental equation here, or you can just make an approximation that you're looking at the point in time 
where this first term right here is going to be at its peak value. Um, either of those three ways is fine as far as um, figuring out um, you know, what's going to be this ratio of asymmetrical to symmetrical current. All right. So anyway, um, this is kind of an example I worked last year when I actually had like this uh, special projector I could use. I don't have access to that right now. So rather than having you know watching you uh, watching me kind of write things out longhand, you know I'm just probably going to be taking some of these worked examples and scrolling through. And you'll have access both to the the video or what I'm recording right now. Plus you'll have the PDF. So if um, you don't think it's necessary to watch the video, you can you can just write go to the PDF and and take a look at um, some of these examples that I go through um, during the semester. All right, thank you.